Hi everyone. Um, welcome to our eight week class. Um, I'm excited to meet you, excited to get started. Um, and I just wanted to take a few minutes um, at the beginning of the semester to um, tell you just a couple of things about the course. It's just in a really general way um, and strategies that I've seen that have worked for students in online courses in general and in the uh, compressed schedules um, in particular. Um, so um, the first thing I want to point out is um, each week you've probably navigated around in Blackboard and so you've seen what the general layout is. Um, each week there's going to be a checklist in Blackboard and I would encourage you to look at all parts of that checklist early in the week. Um, I think sometimes students, or I know that sometimes students, will use the calendar function in Blackboard or the My Grades page in Blackboard to see what's due um, and get reminded of things in that way. But not everything that's due in this class is going to be listed. Not everything is graded, um, but sometimes things are connected and unless you've done all the parts, um, you won't be able to do the graded part. And so I would encourage you to use the checklist. Um, I try really hard to make the checklist, everything that's in the, in the course for that week um, is in the same order that's in the checklist. So if you're looking for something in the checklist um, and aren't, don't seem to be finding it, look at the thing before it and after it and then look down and find those things and it should be in between there. If it's not, let me know. Um, sometimes when I'm posting things um, over the weekend, I don't always realize that they're not visible to students yet and um, I try and turn everything on and if I miss something, I'd like to know. So um, there's usually one student who uh, does it uh, every week, um, catches the things that I miss and I love that student. So if you're that student, <clears throat> bring it on um, because it fixes it early for everybody else and then instead of inconveniencing 20 people who are trying to look for something, um, I've just I've fixed it after the first person. So hopefully there won't be those things, but you never know, nobody's perfect. Um, so that's the checklist. Um, reading, there's a lot of reading in this class. We're gonna use the entire textbook. Um, there will be a few chapters, mostly in the second half of the book, that we won't, we won't use the whole chapter. And so, and I will always let you know, like, hey, you know, we're reading chapter nine and 10. Um, when you're in nine, just focus on the second part of it or, or something like that. So um, keep in mind that that will be coming. Um, but in the first few weeks, at least, um, we will be using the entire, um, the entire book and the entire chapter. Um, and we will cover the entire book. So um, it's almost impossible to succeed in this class without the book. Um, having said that, if you have access to the previous edition of the book um, through a used copy um, and you're concerned about that, um, let me know, tell me what book you have, but um, in general, um, if you're using the edition that's one below the one that we're currently using, um, you should be fine. Um, for reading, um, to keep up with the reading, it's better to do a little bit of, of, or at least have skimmed all the chapters than to have done a close read on the first two and not gotten to the second two in any, you know, if there was a four chapter week, and there will be some. Um, so uh, my advice to students is read the chapter summary first before you do anything else. Read the chapter summary first, then go back to the chapter and skim it as quickly as you possibly can. And this isn't just a strategy for this class, it's for other classes as well. Skim it as quickly as you can, um, and then read the chapter summary again and see whether there are things in that summary that you're still not super clear on. And those are the things that you should go back and study um, rather than doing a close read word for word, paragraph by paragraph through the whole thing. Um, there's a lot in this course and there's a lot that I'm never going to hold you responsible for. Just because a study was cited and it talked about something that uh, we found in 2014 doesn't mean that I'm going to ask you to repeat that thing. Um, or, or to retain that thing, um, even I can't retain all those things. There's a lot in a textbook. Um, but I try to um, hit the high points. Um, you can use the uh, PowerPoint slides as a note-taking tool if it's useful to you. Um, you don't need to study the PowerPoint slides, but if, you know, I know that when I'm reading a chapter for the first time, I print them out and take notes in the margin. Um, so if that's helpful to you, the, the PowerPoint slides will be out there for you. Um, the discussions are low stakes. Um, some people hate discussions. And I used to hear that a bunch, and so there were some semesters where I took the discussions out, and then people said, oh no, we missed the discussions, bring back the discussions. So the discussions are back, um, but they're low stakes. Um, they're a relatively small part of your grade. Um, you have, um, uh, you know, you'll have things that I ask you to do. It's not a huge writing assignment, but um, I'll ask you to answer a question, or to give your opinion on something, or to um, tell me something that you observed, or tell your students, your fellow students, um, and then respond to several of your, of your classmates. Um, it shouldn't take you a long time. I don't imagine that you couldn't complete the entire discussion board in 15 or 20 minutes at the most. Um, and some weeks, not every week, but some weeks there will also be a live option. So instead of doing a written discussion, you can connect um, in Adobe Connect and I'll have a live session where you can use audio or video or chat or all three. Um, and we can talk about this, those same things or anything else that students want to talk about in that same way. So um, stay tuned for those. I'll send the links out. 
Um, they'll be posted in the, um, in the weekly checklist, and I'll also send out a reminder usually on the day of the discussion. Um, email. Um, you can always email me with questions. Um, there's a Q&A forum, uh, and I encourage you to use that um, if it's a question that somebody else might also want the answer to. So if you're talking to me about yourself, send an email. But if you're asking about something about an assignment or asking me to clarify something about um, the paper or you know some other or something in psychology, um, you know use the Q&A forum if you can, because then uh, other people will be able to see that. Will be able to see that as well. Um, you can also text message me using remind.com and the instructions on how to do that are in Blackboard. Um, and I won't see your telephone number and you won't see my telephone number, um, but it enables you to send me a short message and I can text you back. And time of day doesn't matter to me. Um, if you text me at three in the morning, uh, if I'm up, I might answer you, but uh, it's unlikely that I'll be up. Usually um, I'll just respond the next time I have my phone in front of me, which is a lot like everybody else. So, and I don't mind at all if you text me. Um, just keep the questions relatively short. If you have a long detailed question, that's probably more appropriate for an email, um, but, uh, but I don't mind getting texts, so don't hesitate. Um, grades, um, if you miss an assignment or miss a quiz um, and it's Monday morning or Tuesday even um, and I haven't graded it yet, go ahead and send it in. You don't need to email me and tell me that it's going to be late. Um, if you can beat me to the grade book, then I'll grade it for full points. Um, I don't take any joy in, uh, in putting zeros into the grade book. Um, what I like is to give good grades, um, especially when they're earned or only when they're earned. But um, So the, the first thing I do is grade all the assignments for the week and then I put in the zeros. So if you can beat me to that, then just go ahead and do it. You don't need to give me any kind of an explanation. Um, the only time that you can't do that is for the major paper. Um, there is a, you know, there's a two-day grace period and then, and then there's a penalty phase, or not a penalty, but a deduction for late papers. Um, and that's, that will be in the assignment. You'll know what that is. Um, and the other thing that can't be made up is um, discussions um, because there's no one left in the room, right? So there's no point in posting to a discussion that nobody's going to read. Um, so, um, so those can't be made up. But the other things can, so um, keep that in mind. Um, your writing assignments, every week there'll be a number of short writing assignments. I'll ask you to watch a video and then ask you a question about it or ask you to read something and ask you a question about it or do something. Um, keep in mind that those are short writing assignments. You know, I don't expect mo for most of them for, for them to take you more than five to ten minutes. Um, you don't need to write, uh, write a five paragraph essay. You can just answer the question. Um, the format doesn't really matter. Um, and you'll get 10 out of 10 for writing a paragraph and you'll get 10 out of 10 for writing two pages. So if you're interested in the topic and you want to write more, I am more than happy to read it. I love psychology. So um, you can never tell me too much about those things, but, um, but, but you don't have to. Um, I wanted to keep that, um, keep that uh, front and center. And then the last thing I want to say is tests. Um, there are two tests, the midterm and a final. Um, you'll need to take those in the testing center. So I would encourage you to make those appointments as early as you can so that you get the location and time um, and day that you want. Um, so you can go ahead and make those now if you want to for both the midterm and the final. Um, if you live more than 50 miles from a Wake Tech campus, the process for getting an alternate proctor approved um, is pretty complicated. So if you're gonna do that, um, try and email me within the first week, no later than the second week, um, so that we can go ahead and get that process started. Um, I have to send something in, and then you have to send something in, and then the testing center sends something to the proctor, and the proctor has to send something in, and then it goes back through that process. So it takes a while to get it all approved, um, and the testing center won't approve it if it doesn't, if it's not all finished within, I think, four or five days of the test opening date. Um, so yeah, so if it doesn't apply to you, no worries, but if it does apply to you, um, go ahead and uh, get that started uh, soon by sending me an email. Um, and I think that's all I've got for right now. So have a good week. Um, again, welcome to the class. Um, and if I can help you out at any point, just let me know. Um, I'm hoping everybody has a really good semester. So thanks, bye.